Have you ever felt like someone was quietly pulling the strings in your life, controlling your decisions without you even realizing it? Maybe it's a boss at work, a friend who's always getting their way, or even a partner who knows just how to push your buttons. You try to keep your boundaries, but somehow you end up doing things you didn't even want to do. It feels like no matter how hard you try to stand your ground, you're still being manipulated. Sounds familiar? Manipulation happens all around us, and sometimes it's so subtle we don't even recognize it until we're caught in the middle. From relationships to work, or even social situations, people have a way of making us bend to their will. And when we allow it, we give away something priceless. Our personal power, our ability to control our own lives. But here's the good news. Stoicism has the answer. Stoicism is an ancient philosophy that teaches us how to build mental strength and avoid being swayed by others. It's about learning to control your own mind, your reactions, and ultimately, your life. Imagine being immune to manipulation. No one can control you unless you let them. That's exactly what we're going to talk about today. Today, I'm going to share with you 12 powerful Stoic rules that will help you never be manipulated again. These aren't just theoretical ideas. They're practical, real-world strategies that will help you build emotional strength, set boundaries, and take back control of your actions and decisions. But before we dive into these life-changing rules, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and like this video. It helps us reach more people who need these insights. All right, let's get into it. Now, here's the thing. Manipulators thrive on getting a reaction out of you. They'll push your buttons, poke at your insecurities, and wait for you to respond emotionally. Once you do, they've got you. They know how to control your mood, your decisions, and even your actions because they've triggered a response from you. That's where you lose control, when you let someone else dictate how you feel. Imagine this. Someone insults you in a meeting, or maybe a close friend makes a passive-aggressive comment. Your immediate reaction is to get angry, right? To defend yourself, to react. But here's the problem. You just gave them power. That moment you react emotionally, you're no longer in control of yourself. They are. And that's exactly how manipulation works. They push, you react. They pull, you respond. But what if you could flip that? What if, instead of reacting, you could stay calm and keep your emotions in check? That's the heart of Stoicism, mastering your own reactions. The Stoics believe that it's not the things that happen to us that disturb us. It's how we think about those things. So when someone tries to provoke you, their behavior doesn't have to affect you. Their actions are just that, external events. What you can control is how you choose to respond. Now, let me tell you how this plays out in real life. Picture a situation where someone tries to get under your skin, maybe at work or in your personal life. Instead of reacting immediately, pause. Take a moment, breathe, and remind yourself I control my response, not them. By doing this, you're showing emotional resilience. You're demonstrating that you are in charge and that they can't dictate how you feel or what you do. This approach is so powerful because manipulators rely on your emotions to control you. If you stay calm, if you don't give them the reaction they're fishing for, they lose their hold on you. They expect you to get upset to react in frustration, to fight back. When you don't, they're left confused and, more importantly, powerless. Let me give you an example. Let's say your boss makes a snide remark in front of everyone, 
something designed to embarrass you. In that moment, you could fire back, let anger take over, and say something you might regret later. But a stoic response would be to pause, control your emotions, and stay calm. You acknowledge their behavior without letting it influence your state of mind. In this way, you keep your dignity intact and avoid being manipulated into a heated argument or outburst. The power stays with you. And look, this isn't about suppressing your emotions or pretending you don't feel anything. It's about training your mind to separate the event from your response. Stoicism teaches us that we have control over how we interpret events and, more importantly, how we react to them. If someone insults you, that's their action, not yours. You can decide whether to take that insult personally or let it roll off your back. Here's a powerful reminder from the Stoic philosopher Epictetus. It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. This is a game changer. When you realize that no one can make you feel angry, anxious or upset without your permission, you take back control of your life. Think about that for a second. No one can control your emotions unless you allow them to. By mastering your reactions, you stop letting others manipulate you. It's that simple. The next time someone tries to provoke you, stay calm, breathe and remember that you're in control. Manipulators can only manipulate you if you let them. And here's the kicker. Once people realize they can't control your emotions, they stop trying. They see that you're steady, grounded and unshakable and that's a powerful position to be in. The moment you control your reactions, you've won. You're no longer a puppet in someone else's game. So to wrap up this first rule, don't try to change others' behavior. Control your own reactions. The only person you can control is yourself. And that's all you need. The more you practice this, the less people will be able to sway or manipulate you. Now, let's keep moving forward because we've got 11 more stoic rules to get through and each one builds on this foundation of emotional strength and control. Stay with me. You're going to love where this journey takes you. Let's move right into the next key principle. Detach from external validation. This is a huge one because, let's face it, a lot of us care, maybe too much, about what others think of us. Whether we're conscious of it or not, many of our decisions, actions, and even our sense of self-worth are shaped by external validation. We seek compliments, approval, recognition. But here's the thing. As soon as you start relying on others for validation, you're giving them control over you. Think about it. If someone's praise can lift you up, then their criticism can tear you down. It's a double-edged sword. You're giving them the power to dictate how you feel about yourself. That's dangerous territory, and it's exactly how manipulation starts. When you seek validation from others, you become vulnerable to their opinions, and manipulators know how to use that against you. They can inflate your ego with compliments to get you to do what they want, and the second you don't comply, they take that validation away, leaving you feeling small and inadequate. But what if you could stop needing that external validation altogether? That's where Stoicism comes in. The Stoics believed that true strength comes from within, not from the opinions or approval of others. Marcus Aurelius, one of the greatest Stoic philosophers, put it simply, the happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts, not on someone else's approval, not on whether someone likes you, compliments you, or recognizes your efforts. Your value, your happiness, comes from your own inner judgment. When you start to detach from external validation, you reclaim your power. 
you stop caring about whether someone praises you or criticizes you because your self-worth is no longer tied to their opinion. You become immune to their control. Imagine walking into a room and not caring what anyone thinks, whether they approve of you, criticize you, or don't even notice you. It sounds freeing, right? That's because it is. Now, how does this work in real life? Let's break it down with an example. Picture yourself at work, and maybe you've just completed a big project. Naturally, you want your boss or your colleagues to recognize your effort, maybe even give you a compliment. But what happens when that praise doesn't come? Suddenly, you're second-guessing yourself, wondering if you did a good job, or if you're even valued in the workplace. This is where the power of detachment comes in. Instead of waiting for that external praise, you look inward. You ask yourself, did I do my best? Am I proud of the work I did? If the answer is yes, that's all the validation you need. You don't need someone else's approval to feel good about yourself. This shift in mindset is incredibly empowering because it takes the control out of other people's hands and puts it back into yours. When you don't depend on external validation, no one can manipulate you with it. They can try to flatter you, they can try to tear you down, but it won't affect you because your self-worth is grounded in your own judgment, not theirs. And listen, this isn't about becoming indifferent to everyone around you or pretending like you don't care about other people's opinions. It's about recognizing that their opinions shouldn't have the power to determine how you feel about yourself. You can listen to feedback, you can take it in, but at the end of the day, your sense of worth has to come from within. Let me share a story that perfectly illustrates this. In ancient Rome, Marcus Aurelius was constantly surrounded by people, advisors, generals, even enemies, who had opinions about his every decision. Some praised him, others criticized him, but he never let those opinions shape his actions or his sense of self. He lived by his principles, guided by his own inner compass. He didn't seek validation from others because he understood that external opinions are fleeting and unreliable. He knew that true power lies in staying true to your own values and judgment, regardless of what others think. And this is the mindset you need to adopt if you want to stop being manipulated. When you stop caring about what others think, whether it's praise or criticism, you become untouchable. Manipulators thrive on your need for validation. They know that if they give you a compliment, they can get you to do something in return. Or if they withhold that approval, they can control your emotions. But when you detach from that need, you break free from their grasp. They lose the ability to influence you. This is where you regain your freedom. Your self-worth isn't tied to what someone else thinks of you, and that's incredibly powerful. When you value your own judgment above all else, when you're confident in your actions and decisions, no one can take that from you. You stop being controlled by others because you're no longer chasing their approval, so to sum this up, stop seeking validation from others. Look inward for your sense of worth. When you do, you'll notice how much lighter you feel, how much more control you have over your own life. Remember, your self-worth isn't something anyone else should have control over. Don't let them hold the key to your happiness. You're the only one who has that power. All right, we've got some momentum now. Let's keep moving forward and dive into the next rule, because each one of these builds on the last, and by the end, you'll have a rock-solid foundation that no manipulator can crack. All right, let's dive into the next crucial point, setting clear boundaries. Now, if you want to avoid being manipulated, this is one of the most important things you need to master. Manipulators are experts at finding where your boundaries are weak or unclear. And once they figure that out, they'll push, they'll test, and they'll keep going until they find just how much you're willing to bend.
Here's the truth. When your boundaries aren't clear, people will assume it's okay to cross them. It's human nature. And when they realize they can push you without consequences, they'll keep pushing. That's why it's so important to set firm, non-negotiable boundaries from the start. It's about showing people where the line is and letting them know that crossing it is simply not an option. Let's look at how this works in practice. Have you ever had someone in your life who just keeps asking for favors one after another? Maybe it starts small. Can you help me with this? Or do you mind staying late just this once? But before you know it, that one favor turns into two, three, and suddenly you're always the one people go to when they need something. You start feeling resentful, but the problem is you never set a clear boundary in the first place. You allowed those little lines to blur, and now people think it's okay to keep asking. Now, Stoicism teaches us the importance of self-discipline and self-respect. And part of that self-respect is understanding the value of your time, your energy, and your personal space. When you respect your own boundaries, you train others to respect them too. It's that simple. But... If you don't respect your own limits, why would anyone else? Stoicism tells us to be the gatekeepers of our lives. You decide who gets access to your time, your energy, and your mental space. That's not up to anyone else. So, how do you set these boundaries? It starts with being clear about what you will and won't tolerate. You need to know exactly where your limits are so you can communicate them effectively. And once you've set those boundaries, stick to them, no matter what. Manipulators love testing boundaries to see if you'll crack under pressure. But when you stay firm, you show them that you're not someone to be toyed with. Here's a classic example. Let's say you have a friend who's always late. You've told them several times that it bothers you, but nothing changes. A boundary-setting approach would be to say, Look, I value my time, and I've noticed that you're often late when we meet up. If it continues, I'm going to stop scheduling things with you. That's a boundary. You're not being rude or aggressive. You're simply stating your limits and the consequences for crossing them. And here's the key. If they're late again, follow through. Stop making plans with them. This isn't about being mean. It's about respecting yourself enough to enforce your boundaries. Now, some people might not like it when you set boundaries. That's okay. People who are used to crossing your boundaries might react negatively at first. They're used to getting their way. But that's their issue, not yours. It's not your job to make people comfortable with your boundaries. Your job is to protect your peace, your time, and your energy. Another thing to keep in mind is that setting boundaries isn't just about saying no to others. It's also about saying yes to yourself. Every time you enforce a boundary, you're reinforcing the idea that your needs matter, that your time is valuable, it's about giving yourself permission to prioritize your own well-being over the demands of others. And when you do that, you stop being manipulated. Manipulators can't work with someone who has strong, clear boundaries because they know they won't get anywhere. All right, let's dive into the next crucial point, setting clear boundaries. Now, if you want to avoid being manipulated, this is one of the most important things you need to master. Manipulators are experts at finding where your boundaries are weak or unclear. And once they figure that out, they'll push, they'll test, and they'll keep going until they find just how much you're willing to bend. Here's the truth. When your boundaries aren't clear, people will assume it's okay to cross them. It's human nature. And when they realize they can push you without consequences, they'll keep pushing. That's why it's so important to set firm, non-negotiable boundaries from the start. It's about showing people where the line is and letting them know 
that crossing it is simply not an option. Let's look at how this works in practice. Have you ever had someone in your life who just keeps asking for favors, one after another? Maybe it starts small. Can you help me with this? Or do you mind staying late just this once? But before you know it, that one favor turns into two, three, and suddenly you're always the one people go to when they need something. You start feeling resentful, but the problem is you never set a clear boundary in the first place. You allowed those little lines to blur, and now people think it's okay to keep asking. Now Stoicism teaches us the importance of self-discipline and self-respect. And part of that self-respect is understanding the value of your time, your energy, and your personal space. When you respect your own boundaries, you train others to respect them too. It's that simple. But if you don't respect your own limits, why would anyone else? Stoicism tells us to be the gatekeepers of our lives. You decide who gets access to your time, your energy, and your mental space. That's not up to anyone else. So how do you set these boundaries? It starts with being clear about what you will and won't tolerate. You need to know exactly where your limits are so you can communicate them effectively. And once you've set those boundaries, stick to them no matter what. Manipulators love testing boundaries to see if you'll crack under pressure. But when you stay firm, you show them that you're not someone to be toyed with. Here's a classic example. Let's say you have a friend who's always late. You've told them several times that it bothers you, but nothing changes. A boundary-setting approach would be to say, Look, I value my time, and I've noticed that you're often late when we meet up. If it continues, I'm going to stop scheduling things with you. That's a boundary. You're not being rude or aggressive. You're simply stating your limits and the consequences for crossing them. And here's the key. If they're late again, follow through. Stop making plans with them. This isn't about being mean. It's about respecting yourself enough to enforce your boundaries. Now, some people might not like it when you set boundaries. That's okay. People who are used to crossing your boundaries might react negatively at first. They're used to getting their way. But that's their issue, not yours. It's not your job to make people comfortable with your boundaries. Your job is to protect your peace, your time, and your energy. Another thing to keep in mind is that setting boundaries isn't just about saying no to others. It's also about saying yes to yourself. Every time you enforce a boundary, you're reinforcing the idea that your needs matter, that your time is valuable. It's about giving yourself permission to prioritize your own well-being over the demands of others. And when you do that, you stop being manipulated. Manipulators can't work with someone who has strong, clear boundaries because they know they won't get anywhere. All right, let's keep going. Now, the next stoic rule is a real game changer. Practice indifference to praise and criticism. Here's the thing. Both praise and criticism are powerful tools of manipulation. People will use flattery to get on your good side or to make you feel indebted to them. On the flip side, they'll criticize you to break down your confidence and make you question yourself. Both of these tactics are ways to control how you think and act. But here's what the Stoics teach us. Treat both praise and criticism with the same level of indifference. That means you don't let compliments inflate your ego and you don't let criticism tear you down. You maintain the same calm, steady mindset, regardless of what others say. And here's the kicker. Once you stop letting praise and criticism affect you, manipulators lose a major tool they use to control you. They can't flatter you into doing what they want, and they can't criticize you into doubting yourself. You become untouchable. 
they'll realize that their words don't have the power to sway you, and they'll stop trying. You'll notice a shift in how people treat you. When they see that you're not easily influenced, they'll start respecting you more. So, to wrap this up, practice indifference to both praise and criticism. Don't let compliments inflate your ego, and don't let criticism tear you down. Your self-worth comes from within, not from the opinions of others. When you can master this, you'll find that no one can manipulate you with words ever again. All right, we're building some serious momentum here, and the next rule is going to add another layer to your armor against manipulation. Stick with me, because the more we dive into these stoic principles, the more you'll see how powerful they are in helping you reclaim control over your life. Let's take a real-world scenario. Imagine someone at work is constantly showering you with compliments, telling you how great you are, how skilled you are, how they couldn't do their job without you. It feels good, right? But then, when they ask you to stay late to help with their project or cover their shift, you feel like you owe them. Their flattery made you more likely to say yes because now you don't want to disappoint them and you don't want to lose that feeling of being valued. That's a classic manipulation technique, using praise to make you do something you wouldn't normally agree to. But here's the stoic response to that. Practice indifference. Acknowledge the compliment without letting it dictate your actions. Appreciate the kind words, but don't let them influence your decisions. Marcus Aurelius, one of the great Stoic philosophers, said, Receive without pride. Let go without attachment. That means when someone compliments you, you accept it without letting it puff up your ego. And when they criticize you, you let it slide off your back without letting it drag you down. Now, let's look at the other side, criticism. Picture this. You're working on a project and someone criticizes your approach. Maybe they say it's not good enough, or they imply that you're not capable. Your instinct might be to defend yourself, to prove them wrong, or to feel insecure about your abilities. But that's where manipulation creeps in. When you let criticism affect you, you're giving the other person control over your emotions. You're allowing their opinion to dictate how you feel about yourself. Epictetus, another great Stoic philosopher, reminds us to be indifferent to both flattery and insults. He taught that our value doesn't come from what others say about us, but from our own actions and thoughts. If someone flatters you, it doesn't mean you're suddenly better than you were before. And if someone criticizes you, it doesn't mean you're any less valuable than you were before. Both praise and criticism are external, they're just opinions. They don't change who you are or what you're capable of. When you stop being swayed by others' opinions, you regain control of your emotions and decisions. It's liberating. You start making choices based on your own values and principles, not on whether someone is praising you or criticizing you. Imagine the freedom that comes with that. No more chasing after compliments. No more feeling crushed by negative feedback. You're centered, calm, and unshakable. Now, let me give you another example. Let's say you're at a family gathering and a relative starts throwing subtle jabs at you, criticizing your life choices, your career, or even how you're raising your kids. It's easy to get defensive, to want to fire back, or to feel hurt. But a stoic response would be to practice indifference. You know your values, you know your reasons for making the choices you've made, and no one else's opinion can change that. You stay calm and let their words pass by without giving them the power to affect your mood or self-esteem. You don't need to defend yourself because their criticism doesn't define you. This approach doesn't just help you avoid being manipulated, it also strengthens your character. 
When you stop chasing after praise or fearing criticism, you become more self-assured, more resilient, and less dependent on others for your sense of worth. You become grounded in who you are, and that's something no one can take from you. Now, you might be wondering, does this mean you should ignore all feedback, both positive and negative? Not at all. Feedback can be valuable, but the key is to take it in with a balanced mindset. When someone offers praise or criticism, you can consider it objectively, but don't let it control your emotions or dictate your actions. Take what's useful and leave the rest. Your value isn't tied to what others think of you. It's tied to how you live your life according to your own principles. Let's keep the momentum going with Rule 5. Focus on what you can control. And this is a big one. One of the most powerful lessons from Stoicism and one that can truly transform the way you handle manipulation is this. Focus only on what's within your control. Here's the thing. Manipulators thrive on getting you to worry about things you can't control. They'll make you anxious about outcomes that aren't in your hands or guilt you into feeling responsible for things that aren't your responsibility. When they do this, they create a sense of powerlessness in you, and that's when they can step in and take control. And here's the final takeaway. By focusing on what's within your control, you reclaim your peace of mind. Manipulators thrive on chaos, on making you feel like you're responsible for everything. But when you stay centered, focused only on what's within your power, you become untouchable. Your thoughts are your own, your actions are your own, and no one can take that from you. All right, let's keep this going. We've covered some powerful ground, but there's more to come. Stick with me as we dive deeper into these stoic principles, because the next rule is going to take this even further. You don't want to miss it. Think about it. How often have you worried about what someone else might think of you, or feared the consequences of something that's out of your hands? Manipulators use this to their advantage. They'll stir up fear, guilt, or doubt, pushing you into a state of worry about things you can't change. And that's exactly where they want you, focusing on things outside of your control so that they can guide your decisions. But here's what Stoicism teaches us, and this is crucial. The only thing you have true power over is yourself, your thoughts, your actions, and your reactions. Everything else, outside your control. And once you embrace this, you become immune to manipulation. Let me share a principle from Epictetus, one of the great Stoic philosophers. Some things are within our control, and some things are not. It is only by focusing on what we can control that we find peace and strength. This concept is known as the dichotomy of control. The idea that life is split into two categories, the things we can control and the things we can't. When you focus on the former and release the latter, manipulators lose their hold on you. Here's how this plays out in real life. Imagine someone at work trying to guilt trip you into taking on extra tasks, saying things like, if you don't stay late, the whole team is going to struggle. They're trying to make you feel responsible for the team's performance. But here's the truth. Whether or not the team struggles isn't in your control. You can control the effort you put into your own work but you can't control the entire outcome. By understanding this, you can free yourself from the guilt they're trying to place on you. Or let's say a friend is trying to manipulate you with fear, saying something like, if you don't help me with this, things are going to fall apart and it'll all be your fault. Again, they're trying to make you worry about an outcome you can't control. The stoic approach would be to acknowledge what is within your control, 
your ability to help, your own boundaries, and let go of the rest. If it falls apart, that's not on you. And it's certainly not something you should let influence your peace of mind. This isn't about being indifferent to other people's struggles. It's about recognizing the limits of your influence. The Stoics were big on responsibility, being responsible for yourself, your actions and your thoughts, but not for what's beyond your control. And this is where manipulators lose their grip. When they can't make you worry about things you can't control, they can't manipulate you with fear or guilt. Now, let me give you a personal example of how powerful this can be. Let's say someone in your life constantly brings up worst-case scenarios, trying to make you anxious about the future. Maybe they're saying things like, what if this doesn't work out? Or, what if you make the wrong decision? It's easy to get caught up in that anxiety. But when you focus on what's within your control, your actions, your decisions, your mindset, you take back your power. You acknowledge that while the outcome might be uncertain, you've done everything you can, and that's all that matters. This shift in focus is liberating. Suddenly, all that worry about things beyond your control starts to fade, and you're left with a sense of clarity and peace. You realize that no one can manipulate you into feeling anxious or guilty about things you can't change. You take charge of your own mind, and that's where real freedom lies. Let me share one more quote from Epictetus, because this really drives the point home. Make the best use of what is in your power, and take the rest as it happens. When you live by this rule, you stop stressing over things that aren't in your hands, and manipulators can't use those things to control you anymore. So, how do you put this into practice? First, every time you feel anxious, stop and ask yourself, is this something I can control? If the answer is no, let it go. Focus on what you can control, your thoughts, your actions, your choices, and release the rest. The more you do this, the more you'll notice that manipulative tactics no longer have an effect on you. You become immune to the guilt trips, the fear-mongering, and the attempts to make you responsible for things outside of your control. Now let's talk about a rule that sounds simple, but is surprisingly difficult for many of us. Mastering the power of saying no. We've all been in situations where we've agreed to something we didn't want to do because we were afraid of disappointing someone or maybe because we felt pressured. It could be staying late at work when you're already overwhelmed, agreeing to help a friend with something that eats into your own personal time, or saying yes to a favor that you really don't have the capacity to take on. Why is saying no so hard? Well, manipulators know that many of us struggle with this. They count on it. They know that if you're someone who hates conflict or wants to be liked, you'll find it difficult to say no, and they'll use that against you. The result? You end up doing things that don't align with your priorities, goals, or well-being, just to avoid feeling guilty or uncomfortable. But here's where Stoicism steps in and helps us break free from that. The Stoics taught that we should always act according to our values, not based on the opinions or expectations of others. In the same way that we detach from external validation, we can learn to set boundaries and say no without feeling guilty about it. It's about recognizing that your time, your energy and your peace of mind are just as valuable as anyone else's. And sometimes, protecting those things means saying no, Let's break this down with an example. Say you have a colleague who constantly asks you to cover for them. At first you agree because you want to be helpful, maybe even to avoid conflict. But then, it starts happening more frequently. Each time you feel more and more resentful, but you continue to say yes because you don't want to seem uncooperative. 
What's happening here? You're being manipulated by your own fear of saying no. Here's what the Stoics would say. Every time you say yes to something that drains you or pulls you away from what's important, you're essentially saying no to yourself. Stoicism teaches us self-discipline, and part of that discipline is having the strength to refuse things that don't serve you. And saying no doesn't mean you're being selfish. It means you're prioritizing your well-being and staying aligned with your principles. Now, here's the magic of a simple, firm no. When you start saying no, people may be surprised at first, especially if they're used to you saying yes all the time. But over time, they'll start respecting your boundaries. Manipulators are used to pushing until they get their way. But once they realize you won't budge, they lose their power. They move on because they know they can't control you. Let's take a real-life scenario. Imagine you're at work and your boss asks you to take on an extra project that's going to eat into your personal time and you know you're already stretched thin. The old you might have said yes out of fear of disappointing them or worrying about how you'll be perceived. But the stoic, you knows better. Instead, you respond calmly. No, I'm afraid I can't take that on right now. I'm already at capacity. It's a firm but respectful no. You've set a boundary, and more importantly, you've protected your peace of mind. You see, the fear of saying no often comes from the worry of how others will perceive us. We fear disappointing people or being seen as difficult. But here's the stoic perspective. You can't control how others perceive you. You can only control your own actions and decisions. So, instead of worrying about what others think, focus on making decisions that align with your values and protect your well-being. This doesn't mean saying no to everything. It means being thoughtful and intentional about what you agree to. When something aligns with your values or is something you genuinely want to do, say yes. But when something doesn't serve you or puts unnecessary stress on your life, have the courage to say no. Each time you do, you're reinforcing the idea that your boundaries matter and that you are in control of your life. There's a beautiful quote from Seneca that sums this up. It is not that we have a short time to live, but that we waste a lot of it. Saying yes to things that don't serve you is one of the quickest ways to waste your time, your energy, and your peace of mind. Saying no, on the other hand, is an act of self-respect. It's a way of reclaiming your power and ensuring that you're spending your time in ways that align with your priorities. Here's something to keep in mind. Every time you say no to something that drains you, you're actually saying yes to something that matters more. You're saying yes to your own power, your own peace, and your own priorities. So, to wrap up this rule, mastering the power of saying no is one of the most liberating things you can do. It's a skill that will protect you from manipulation, give you control over your life, and help you live more intentionally. And remember, saying no isn't selfish. It's a way to preserve your energy for the things that truly matter. Trust me, the more you practice this, the more empowered you'll feel. All right, we've covered a lot, and each one of these rules is building on the last, creating a solid foundation of stoic strength. Stick with me because we're only halfway through, and the next rule will take your understanding of how to stop being manipulated to an even deeper level. Let's keep going. All right, let's keep rolling. Now, let's dive into something that's absolutely crucial when it comes to avoiding manipulation, understanding people's motives. Here's the thing. Manipulation thrives when we don't fully grasp why someone is acting a certain way. People often have hidden motives, whether it's trying to get something out of you or pushing you toward a decision that benefits them. 
The good news is that Stoicism teaches us a powerful way to uncover these motives by detaching from the emotional side of things and observing situations with calm, logical clarity. Let me explain. When someone is trying to manipulate you, they usually play on your emotions. Maybe they use guilt, fear, or even flattery to get what they want. But if you step back and observe their behavior without getting caught up in how it makes you feel, you'll start to see their true intentions. Stoicism helps you do just that. It teaches you to separate the noise of emotions from the reality of the situation, and this allows you to see people's real motives more clearly. Here's how it plays out in real life. Imagine a co-worker who is always extra nice when they need something from you. They compliment you, act like your best friend, but as soon as you've helped them, they disappear. It's easy to get caught up in the flattery at first and not see what's really happening. But with a stoic mindset, you can step back and observe. What's their motive here? Why are they being so nice now, but not at other times? When you stop reacting emotionally to their behavior, you can see through the act. And this isn't just about catching someone in the act. Understanding motives helps you in all your relationships, whether it's at work, with friends, or even family. People often have their own agendas, and that's not always a bad thing. It's human nature. But by practicing stoic observation, you gain the ability to see things as they are, not as you wish them to be. A key part of Stoicism is recognizing that people act according to their own values, desires, and circumstances. Marcus Aurelius, the Roman emperor and one of the greatest Stoic philosophers, often reminded himself to look at people's motives objectively, to understand that they are acting in a way that makes sense to them, even if it doesn't make sense to you. This understanding helps you avoid falling into their trap because you stop taking their actions personally and start analyzing them logically. For example, let's say a friend is pushing you to make a decision, like joining them on a project or investing in something. Instead of just going along with it because you feel pressured, Pause for a moment. Ask yourself, what's their motive? What do they stand to gain from this? By doing this, you create space between your emotions and the situation. You remove the pressure and start seeing the situation for what it really is. Maybe they're genuinely excited and want you involved. Or maybe they're using your friendship to make the project easier for them. Either way, Understanding their true motive gives you the power to make a clear decision that's right for you, not one based on emotional manipulation. Now, I know this can sound a little cynical at first, but it's not about thinking everyone has bad intentions. It's about understanding that people have their own motives, whether they're aware of them or not. Stoicism helps you recognize this without judgment. When you see people for who they are and why they're doing what they're doing, you stop being controlled by their actions. Here's a final thought. When you understand someone's motives, you take away their power to manipulate you. They can no longer pull strings behind the scenes because you're seeing things clearly. It's like being able to see the magician's trick. It stops working once you know how it's done. So, to sum this up, Use the power of stoic observation and empathy to understand people's motives. Once you can see why someone is acting a certain way, they lose the ability to control you. You're no longer reacting to their words or emotions, but responding from a place of clarity and logic. This is a powerful skill, and the more you practice it, the more in control of your own life you'll become. All right. Let's keep this momentum going. We're on a roll here, and the next principle is going to add even more depth to your understanding of how to avoid being manipulated. Stick with me.
because we're diving deeper into how Stoicism can transform the way you approach life's challenges. Let's keep moving forward. All right, let's dive into something that a lot of us struggle with, the urge to seek revenge. This is a tricky one because when someone wrongs us, it feels natural to want to get back at them. But here's the thing. Revenge is just another form of manipulation and it keeps you stuck in a cycle where someone else is still controlling your emotions. When you seek revenge, you're letting that person have power over you. They wronged you once, but by holding on to anger and plotting revenge, you're letting them continue to influence your mind and your actions. Think about that for a second. Every time you dwell on what they did or how you're going to get back at them, they're still in control. They're still taking up space in your mind. And that's the opposite of what we want, right? Stoicism teaches us something really important here. Revenge is a trap. It feels satisfying in the moment, but it doesn't actually solve anything. It doesn't make you feel better in the long run. In fact, it often makes things worse because you end up carrying around that anger, letting it fester. The Stoics believed that the best way to handle a wrong is to let it go, to rise above it. Let me break it down with a simple example. Let's say someone spreads a rumor about you at work, something that damages your reputation. Your first instinct might be to get back at them, maybe by spreading a rumor of your own or finding a way to make them look bad. But what does that really do? It keeps you stuck in this cycle of negativity and keeps them at the center of your thoughts. Even if you do manage to get even, you're still carrying around the weight of that grudge. Now, let's look at this through a stoic lens. Instead of seeking revenge, you let it go. You remind yourself that their actions are a reflection of them, not you. You don't need to sink to their level to feel better about the situation. In fact, by walking away and refusing to engage, you regain control of your emotions. You free yourself from their influence. This is where true strength comes from, not from getting back at someone, but from being able to rise above the situation with dignity and peace. And here's something important to remember. When you let go of the need for revenge, you're not letting them off the hook. You're simply choosing to protect your own peace of mind instead of letting their actions consume you. Marcus Aurelius, one of the greatest Stoics, often reminded himself that other people's actions are outside of his control. What's within his control is how he responds. And when you choose not to respond with revenge, you're exercising that control over your own life. Think about how much lighter you'd feel if you just walked away from the situation without looking back. That's real freedom. When someone wrongs you and you can say, I'm not going to let this drag me down. I'm not going to waste my energy on revenge. You move forward with your life while they stay stuck in their negativity. Here's another way to look at it. Revenge keeps you tied to the person who wronged you. It keeps you tethered to their actions, their behavior. But when you choose to let it go, you break that connection. You stop letting them have any influence over your life. And that's where true freedom comes in. You're no longer reacting to their actions. You're making decisions based on your own values, your own peace of mind. Let me give you an example from the Stoics. Seneca once wrote, he who seeks revenge should dig two graves. What he meant is that when you focus on revenge, you're not just hurting the other person, you're also hurting yourself. You're carrying around that anger, that bitterness, and it weighs you down. But when you let go of that need for revenge, you're choosing peace over conflict, freedom over chains. So, here's the key takeaway. Revenge is a form of manipulation. It keeps you tied to someone else's actions, letting them control your emotions. 
But when you choose to walk away without looking back, you regain your power. You stop the cycle of manipulation and take back control of your own life. And that's what Stoicism is all about, living according to your own values, not being swayed by the actions of others. All right, let's keep going. We've got more Stoic wisdom to cover, and I know you're going to find these next principles just as powerful. Stay with me as we dive deeper into how Stoicism can help you live a life free from manipulation. All right, let's talk about emotional independence. This one is huge because manipulators thrive on emotional dependence. They know that if they can make you feel emotionally tied to them, they can control your actions, decisions, and even your state of mind. This is where Stoicism comes in as a game changer. It teaches you to maintain emotional independence, to keep your emotions yours, and not let others have control over how you feel. Think about it. Have you ever been in a situation where someone uses your emotional attachment to sway you? Maybe it's a partner or a close friend who says things like, if you love me, you'd do this, or I can't believe you'd hurt me like this after everything. They're using your emotional connection as a way to manipulate you, making you feel guilty or responsible for their feelings. And when that happens, you end up acting out of obligation or guilt rather than doing what's best for you. Here's where Stoicism helps. It teaches us that emotions, while natural, are ours to control. Other people's actions don't have to dictate how we feel. Someone might try to manipulate you by playing on your emotions, but you don't have to give in to that. The Stoics believed that emotional independence is key to personal freedom. When you control your emotions, instead of letting others manipulate them, you stay in control of your own life. Let's break this down with a simple example. Imagine a friend who constantly seeks emotional support, always relying on you for reassurance. It's fine to be there for friends, of course, but over time, this friend starts using your kindness against you. They guilt trip you into doing things for them, maybe even make you feel bad for not always being available. That's emotional dependence. You start feeling obligated to make them feel better, even at the expense of your own peace of mind. Now, with a stoic mindset, you'd recognize this pattern. You'd remind yourself that while you care about your friend, their emotional state is not your responsibility. You can support them, but you're not required to sacrifice your own well-being to do so. By maintaining emotional independence, you keep the power over your own feelings. You don't let someone else's need for validation or reassurance dictate your actions. And this doesn't mean you stop caring about people. Stoicism isn't about being cold or indifferent. It's about recognizing the difference between healthy emotional support and emotional manipulation. You can care deeply for someone, but still draw boundaries to protect your emotional independence. You choose when and how to engage, rather than being pulled into someone else's emotional chaos. Here's a key point. Emotional independence isn't about shutting off your emotions. It's about owning them. Your emotions are yours, and no one else should have the power to control how you feel. Marcus Aurelius said it best. You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. This means you decide how to respond to someone else's actions, whether they're trying to guilt you, flatter you, or make you feel responsible for their happiness. You don't have to play into it. You can care without being controlled. And once people realize they can't manipulate you emotionally, they'll stop trying. Manipulators need emotional hooks to control you. When they see that you're steady, emotionally independent and not easily swayed, they lose their grip. You become stronger, 
more resilient and more in control of your life. So, here's the takeaway. Emotional independence is about keeping your feelings in your own hands. Don't let anyone use your emotions to manipulate you or make you feel guilty for setting boundaries. Your emotions belong to you. And the more you practice emotional independence, the more free and empowered you'll feel. All right, we're making great progress, and the next principle will take this even further. Stick with me as we continue to break down these powerful stoic rules, each one building on the last, helping you create an unshakable foundation of personal strength. Let's keep going. Let's talk about something that holds a lot of people back, fear of being alone. This is something manipulators love to use against you. They know that if you're afraid of solitude, they can make you feel dependent on them. Whether it's in relationships, friendships, or even at work, the fear of being alone often makes us tolerate situations we know aren't good for us. But here's the thing. Stoicism teaches us that solitude isn't something to fear, it's something to embrace. When you're comfortable being alone, when you're at peace with yourself, no one can use that fear to manipulate you. Take Marcus Aurelius, for example. As one of the most powerful men in the world, he often found himself surrounded by people, but he valued his time alone. In his meditations, he wrote about the importance of retreating into yourself, finding strength in solitude, and not depending on others for your peace of mind. He understood that being alone wasn't a weakness, it was a way to build inner resilience. Now, this doesn't mean you need to shut yourself off from the world. It's not about avoiding people. It's about realizing that you don't need others to validate your worth. When you're comfortable with who you are, when you can sit in silence and be at peace with your own company, you become stronger. You stop fearing the idea of being alone because you realize that your value doesn't come from others. It comes from within. Let's look at this in a practical sense. Imagine someone trying to manipulate you by making you feel like you need them. Maybe it's a partner who says things like, you won't find anyone better than me, or a friend who makes you feel guilty for spending time apart. If you're afraid of being alone, these words can hit hard. You start to believe that being without them means you're incomplete. But when you've embraced solitude, you see right through this manipulation. You know that being alone doesn't mean you're lacking. In fact, it can be a time to grow, reflect, and strengthen your own sense of self. Here's the key. When you're no longer afraid of being alone, you become immune to this kind of manipulation. No one can make you feel like you need them to be happy or whole. You choose your connections based on mutual respect and value, not out of fear of loneliness. So, here's the takeaway. Solitude is not something to run from. It's a source of power. When you're comfortable with yourself, when you embrace the quiet moments and learn to enjoy your own company, no one can use your fear of being alone to control you. You stand stronger, more confident, and more in control of your own life. All right, we're getting closer to wrapping up these 12 powerful stoic rules, and the next one is going to dive even deeper into building emotional strength. Stick with me as we continue to break down how you can live a life free from manipulation and keep gaining that inner strength that no one can take from you. Let's talk about forgiveness. Forgiving someone can feel like letting go of a huge weight, right? Stoicism teaches us the power of forgiveness because it's really about freeing yourself from anger and resentment. But here's the important part. Just because you forgive someone, it doesn't mean you have to let them back into your life. Forgiving doesn't mean forgetting what they did or allowing them to manipulate you again. 
Think about it this way. When you hold on to a grudge, it's like carrying around heavy baggage. You're the one feeling the burden, not the person who wronged you. Forgiveness in this sense is an act of self-liberation. You're choosing to release that emotional weight so you can move forward with a clear mind. But here's the thing. Just because you forgive doesn't mean you're erasing what happened. The lesson still stays with you, and it should. Imagine this. Someone close to you betrays your trust. Maybe they lied, manipulated, or took advantage of you. You decide to forgive them, not for their sake, but for your own peace of mind. You let go of the anger, but you don't just jump back into the same relationship without caution. You've learned from the experience. You're more aware now. Forgiving them doesn't mean you're giving them another chance to hurt you. It means you're choosing to move forward without the baggage, but with the wisdom of what you've learned. Marcus Aurelius often reflected on this idea. He wrote about how we must accept that people make mistakes, but we don't have to let their actions affect us more than they already have. In forgiving, we find peace, but we also protect ourselves by remembering the lesson. If you forget the lesson, you risk being hurt again by the same person or situation. Here's a practical way to look at it. Let's say someone at work undermines you or throws you under the bus to get ahead. You can forgive them so you're not carrying around resentment or stress, but that doesn't mean you'll trust them the same way again. You stay cautious, you keep boundaries in place, and you make sure they can't take advantage of you the same way again. Forgiveness isn't about giving them a free pass. It's about making sure you're no longer emotionally tied to their actions, while still being smart enough not to repeat the same mistakes. The key takeaway here is this. Forgive for your own peace, but never forget the lesson. Let go of the anger, but keep the awareness. When you do this, you'll find that forgiveness doesn't make you vulnerable. It makes you stronger. You're not held back by resentment, but you're also not blind to the possibility of being manipulated again. And that's the balance Stoicism teaches us, finding peace within ourselves, but staying wise in how we handle others moving forward. It's about protecting your mental and emotional space while keeping your heart free of bitterness. All right, we're getting close to wrapping up, but stick with me because the last rule is going to tie everything together. You've already come this far, and the final piece is going to help you fully lock in that inner strength. Let's keep going. Let's dive into something really important. Integrity. Now if you want the ultimate defense against manipulation, this is it. When you act with integrity, no one can control you because you're not swayed by outside pressure. Integrity means living by your principles even when it's hard. And when you do that, manipulators have no leverage over you. Let me explain. Manipulators thrive on finding weaknesses. Maybe you bend your values when things get tough, or you go against your beliefs to avoid conflict. But when you're grounded in integrity, you don't give them those openings. You're steady, you're consistent, and that's what makes you untouchable. Think about it like this. Let's say there's someone in your workplace who tries to cut corners. They ask you to bend the rules for a project, or maybe even push you into something unethical because it benefits them. Now, if your sense of integrity is strong, you simply won't do it. You won't go along with their scheme, no matter what they promise you in return or how much pressure they apply. You're grounded in your principles and you don't waver. Here's a great example of this in action. There's a story about a man who worked in a high-powered corporate job. His boss asked him to alter some numbers to make the company's financials look better than they were. This man was faced with a tough decision. 
He could do what his boss wanted and maybe climb higher up the corporate ladder, or he could stick to his values and refuse. He chose integrity. He refused to manipulate the numbers, even though it cost him his job. But here's the thing. He left with his dignity, his principles intact, and that boss. Eventually, he got caught for manipulating those numbers. The man who stood by his integrity wasn't part of the fallout. He avoided being pulled into the mess because he stayed true to his principles. That's the power of acting with integrity. When you live by your own moral code, manipulators can't touch you. Why? Because you won't compromise what matters to you just to make them happy or to avoid conflict. You don't give in to shortcuts or unethical behavior because you know that your values are worth more than any short-term gain. And here's the best part. When you consistently act with integrity, people see that. They learn that you're not someone they can easily manipulate. Your reputation becomes your shield. Marcus Aurelius often wrote about this idea of integrity, doing the right thing because it's the right thing, not because someone's watching or because you'll get rewarded for it. Integrity, he said, is about aligning your actions with your beliefs, no matter what the circumstances are. And when you live this way, you free yourself from the control of others because you're no longer reacting to what they want or expect from you. You're living according to your principles. Now, this doesn't mean it's always easy. There will be moments when standing by your values feels tough. Maybe you'll lose opportunities or face criticism. But the trade-off is worth it. You gain peace of mind, self-respect, and a life that's truly yours, not one dictated by the whims of others. Here's what you need to remember. When you live by your principles, manipulators have no leverage over you. They can try to influence you, they can pressure you, but they'll find no cracks in your foundation. Your integrity keeps you steady, no matter what storms come your way. So, if you want to build an unbreakable defense against manipulation, live with integrity. It's the strongest armor you can wear, and it ensures that no one can ever control you or push you into something that goes against your values. And with that, you've got the final piece of the puzzle. All these rules come together to help you build a life where you're in control, not someone else. When you live by these stoic principles, manipulation loses its power, and you stand firm, living a life that's truly your own. Now let's take everything we've learned and put it into action. This journey has only just begun, and I can't wait to see where it takes you. So, we've covered a lot today, and if you've been following along, you now have 12 powerful rules grounded in Stoicism to stop being manipulated. Let's quickly recap what we've learned. First, it all starts with controlling your reactions. Remember, manipulators want to push your buttons, and the moment you react, they've gained control. But when you stay calm and in control of your emotions, you deny them that power. Then we talked about detaching from external validation. We often care too much about what others think of us, and that makes us vulnerable. But when your self-worth comes from within, when it's grounded in your own judgment, manipulators lose their leverage over you. Setting clear boundaries is another key to avoiding manipulation. You have to communicate your limits and stick to them. When you respect your own boundaries, others will too, and those who don't will fall away. We also discussed how you should practice indifference to praise and criticism. Both of these can be tools used by others to sway you, but when you stop letting compliments inflate your ego or criticism tear you down, you become immune to their control. Focusing on what you can control is central to Stoicism. Manipulators often try to make you worry about things outside your control, 
But once you shift your focus to what you can control, your actions, your mindset, you reclaim your power. Mastering the power of saying no was another big one. Manipulators count on you feeling guilty or uncomfortable saying no. But when you practice saying no firmly and respectfully, you protect your energy and stop being pulled into things that don't serve you. Understanding people's motives is crucial. When you observe without emotion and consider why someone might be acting a certain way, you see through their intentions and avoid falling into their traps. Not seeking revenge is another important principle. Revenge keeps you tethered to the person who wronged you, giving them power over your mind. Instead, rise above it. Let go of the need to get even, and you'll free yourself from their influence. We also talked about maintaining emotional independence. This is about owning your feelings and not letting others control how you feel. When you're emotionally independent, manipulators lose their grip on you because you no longer react to their emotional hooks. Embracing solitude is another powerful defense against manipulation. When you're comfortable being alone, no one can use your fear of loneliness to control you. Solitude strengthens your self-reliance and resilience. Forgive, but don't forget, is a vital rule. Forgiving someone isn't about letting them back into your life or allowing them to manipulate you again. It's about freeing yourself from resentment while keeping the lessons you've learned. And finally, we discussed always acting with integrity. Integrity is your ultimate shield. When you live by your principles, no one can control you. You don't bend to pressure or compromise your values for short-term gains. Integrity keeps you steady, even when others try to sway you. Now think about it for a second. All these rules boil down to one thing, you being in control of your life, not someone else. At the end of the day, manipulation only works when you give others power over your mind and emotions. The Stoics teach us that the only person who can control you is you. Once you embrace these principles, you're no longer at the mercy of others. You're living life on your terms. These aren't just abstract ideas. They're practical tools you can use every day. Whether it's at work, in relationships, or in social situations, these Stoic rules will help you protect your mental space, set boundaries, and live a life of true freedom. You'll stop reacting emotionally, stop being swayed by others' opinions, and start living with clarity and purpose. That's real power, and it's all within your grasp. So, if you're ready to take control of your life, start applying these rules today. Don't wait for someone else to make the first move. Remember, you have the power to stop being manipulated, to live with integrity, and to stand firm in your values. And one last thing before we wrap up. If this resonated with you, and if you found value in these principles, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. We've got more stoic wisdom coming every week, and I want to help you keep building that inner strength, bit by bit. It's a journey, but one worth taking. Thanks for sticking with me through these 12 rules. Now, let's go out there and live with purpose, integrity, and control. The only one who can control your life is you. So, make the most of it.